going over in detail how to program a Motorola M1225 mobile radio. Uh, the M1225 is a uh, small compact mobile radio from the late 90s and it is available in VHF and UHF bands. Uh, it's kind of a quirky radio in that uh, the uh, RSS is kind of uh, finicky sometimes and that uh, is partially due to the fact that it started out as a DOS based software and then transitioned to a Windows based software. So uh, I'm going to be showing you on the computer what I'm using here. So if we look over here, I'm running Windows 7 Ultimate, 32-bit. Uh, I have 4 gigabytes of RAM, and I am running on an Intel Core 2 Duo. Uh, so this combination uh, works really well. You can use this with 32-bit Windows 10. You just need to uh, run as an administrator due to some of the uh, changes made. Now, the CPS, or RSS I should say, was written back uh, for Windows XP, but it runs fine on Windows 10 and Windows 7. Now, starting off, we're going to need to go and find the CPS, or RSS, I'm sorry, and open it. Launches version 4. Again, version 4 is written specifically for Windows XP. Uh, more or less written for NT systems. Uh, so in this case, I am plugged into a... Uh, if we go to my configuration here, uh, COM1 is not the COM port I am using. Uh, I am using COM2 in this case. And there is a beep from the other room where this computer is actually located. I'm using remote desktop on a Windows 10 64-bit machine uh, to do this, but I heard the radio beep. I am interfaced to the radio with a Motorola rib. This will work with a ribless cable, and in the case of uh, anything Windows-based, it'll work with a USB adapter. Now, if you're wanting to work with some of the older DOS radios, you have to have serial. Um, but so in this case, since this computer that I am using is specifically built for programming radios, uh, it actually dual boots DOS and Windows 7 for that purpose. It, I'm using uh, serial ports. So first step, we're going to read the radio. Reading radio, please wait. I may pop. Yep, there goes the status bar. And now the first thing we're going to do is save. Uh, you can change this. Uh, hit OK. File name and hit OK. So now we've saved a copy of the existing code plug, which is uh, best practice. And now we are going to come over here and get some information about this radio first. So, this is a M1225. It is a four-channel model, so it does not have the LCD display. It is a M44, meaning it is a 40-watt UHF radio, and it tells us right here that it's banded for 450 to 474 megahertz. Uh, and again, you can read the model number and get the information that you're told here. Uh, so 25 to 40 watts of output power and four modes or channels. All right, so we're going to open up our mode window. And the first channel we're going to program is going to be 462700, which is what we programmed that R1225 to in the last video. So. 462.700 and we're going to be a tone and we're going to do transmit on 118.8 no signaling no phone system uh, we're going to go wideband we're going to copy that so we can just change 
couple of digits here and we set that to uh, we either set that to 151.4 or 156.7 so we'll just go 151.4 because I have conflicting information in my notes and that's the squelch type local or distance uh, is what it's asking there um, and we're not going to mess with that so now we can move on to our second channel which will be 443.300 so an amateur repeater uh, keep in mind uh, that the 1225 series is one of the part 9095A radios which have been grandfathered by the FCC so they can be used for commercial uh, and GMRS application as long as you're not physically modifying the radio or changing the tuning points they can also be used for amateur radio and in order to retain their commercial and GMRS uh, certification so we're going to try this and I want to do this to specifically answer a question that was posted on the other video so we get an error the, freq the specified frequency is not within this radio's frequency range so we're going to use what's called the shift trick and where we type our frequency in holding down the shift key uh, we will not the decimal we will not hold the shift button for that but here we go Four, four, three, dot, three hundred, and let's just set, leave that default tone, and we're gonna step out of it here, and it accepted it. So now we are going to enter four, four, eight, dot, three. Hundred and let that come out of there. Change that over to wideband because it's amateur radio. And it accepted that. So that is how you get around the band limitations. Now you can do this as, but you will not know if the VCO will lock on the radio until you actually program it and try to go to that channel. So just a fair warning. Uh, though anything in the 440 range, these radios should be capable of doing without changing the VCO, uh, adjust, making adjustments to that. So we're going to add another mode. Now we're going to do 462.675. And we're going to have the travel tone on it of 141.3. We're going to copy that over and 467. And now we can add our final channel, which is going to be a part 90 itinerant uh, frequency of 464.550. And we're going to actually do DPL on this one just so you can see. Uh, you can change squelch to CSQ, DPL, inverted DPL. And let's just pick something here, uh, 251, uh, let's copy that and change that to 464, 468, 500. And because we're in the commercial space now, uh, and it is after 2013, it's 2022, or after, I should say after 2012, uh, we need to make sure that we're narrowband compliant, so we're going to change that to 12.5 kilohertz channel spacing, and that will figure uh, finish up the channel configuration. Uh, here's the signaling menu. We're not doing anything with it, but if you wanted to add DTMF slash phone uh, information here, you could do that, or if you change that to quick call 2, which is two-tone, you can set it up for uh, sequential paging. Uh, the phone list is to input numbers for uh, DTMF dialing. And then here is one that might be handy for several. Uh, you can do different 
uh, you can just configure the accessory connector in different manners. Uh, so we have the general I.O., the remote setting, the phone patch setting, and as you can see these are all changing, and then public address. Now, uh, for general I.O., a couple of things to note is these channel steering inputs down here allow you to define uh, inputs from a tone remote so you could have it change the channels. Uh, there are three of them. However, you only, so that would give you a binary coded decimal of up to three. However, you only have four channels on the radio, so you really only need four, uh, or two, I mean. Now, the uh, if you're wanting to set this up for a repeater, I don't actually recommend it. These are very small chassis. They're not the most efficient power supplies on the, or not power supplies, power amplifiers on these radios. So they create a little bit more heat than something a little bit newer. And they also, when it says 20 to 40 watts, or 25 to 40 watts, you will get, once you f what you will find is once you t go below 25 watts, you actually start drawing more power the lower you go as you saturate those uh, power amplifier transistors. Um, this is the radius line. It's not a lot of high-end components. These were aimed at being a entry to mid-tier product. So it uh, doesn't have some of the high-end components you would find in the public safety grade stuff. But anyway, that pretty much wraps it up uh, for what we're doing. If, you, if we were working with a portable, which I do not currently have, you could set the battery options uh, up. And you can also set your scan lists up and add channels to your scan lists. But... Um, that wraps everything up, so we're going to go ahead and program the radio and wait for our little status to fill. Verifying radio, please wait. Programming radio. And I'm looking down over here, and now our blue bar is coming up, and I'm waiting for it, the radio to beat when it resets itself in the other room. And it just beeped, so this radio is now programmed and ready to be used. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. Hope you all have a good one, and see you in the next video.